baby consumes, regardless of the length of the breastfeed. How often does baby need to breastfeed? How many times did you eat or drink something today? Coffee break, snack, chewing gum, TV nibbles? Most adults have an urge to eat about every 90 minutes while they're awake. Why do you eat or drink? Hunger, thirst, comfort, for social reasons, just because? Taking into account baby's stomach capacity in the first days, it is easy to see that newborns require very frequent feeds. Some babies are sleepy at first and need encouragement to feed frequently. But many newborns like to breastfeed a lot, about 8 to 12 times in 24 hours. In fact, studies show that feeding at least 9 times per day in the first 2 weeks really gets breastfeeding off to a good start. Human milk is quickly and easily digested in about one and a half hours. This doesn't mean that baby will need to eat every hour, but at times this may be so. In utero, baby was fed 24-7. The breast takes over where the placenta left off. Breastfeeding provides warmth, security, body contact, reassurance and relaxation, as well as just food. Don't try to put your baby's favorite activity on a schedule. Forget the clock and enjoy each other, the way the breastfeeding relationship was meant to be. You and your baby are unique. Your breastfeeding relationship will not be exactly like any other. It's worth repeating, feeding frequently is the best way to ensure a good milk supply and a healthy, happy baby. It's a system as old as humankind and it is designed to work. The first four to eight weeks of life with a new baby can be intense. Baby is growing at a rapid rate and his needs change almost on a daily basis. Many babies have a fussy period, usually in the late afternoon. They just don't settle. This is not colic or a sign of too little milk. They tend to group many small feeds together, cluster feeding then usually settle down for a long sleep afterwards. Remember that the shorter the interval between feeds and the emptier the breast, the higher the fat and therefore calorie content. Your breasts may feel empty, but this is not a cause for concern. Growth and development. Babies are born with excess fluid and brown fat. They tend to lose about 7% of their body weight during the first three to four days after birth. This is due to the loss of fluids in the baby's tissues, as well as the passing of meconium. Babies usually regain their birth weight by about 10 days. Boy babies double their birth weight somewhere between three and a half to six months, and girl babies between four and six months. Effect of sucking. As we have seen, the time spent at the breast is no indication of how effectively baby is feeding. If he is at the breast for 60 minutes, but not transferring milk, then no amount of time will be sufficient. A baby who latches on well, gets milk well. A baby who latches on poorly, has more difficulty getting milk, and he is likely to cause painful and damaged nipples. And if he does not get milk well, he will usually stay on the breast for long periods, thus aggravating the pain. Signs of an effective latch. Comfortable, short chopping jaw motions to start, then slow, deep, steady jaw motions, about one per second. Jaw hesitations or cuss sound when baby swallows, usually with every one to three jaw strokes. Occasional rests or return to short strokes, followed by more deep, steady strokes. Nipple is the same shape before and after the feed, not pinched or misshapen in any way. Appetite spurts or frequency days. Some babies seem to suddenly wake up around two weeks after birth and may dramatically increase the number of times they need to be breastfed. These frequency days may occur again around six weeks and three months. The baby's behavior changes from being contented to being fussy for about 48 to 72 hours. 
patience and some extra feeding in order to increase your milk supply will see you both through this time. This is nature's way of increasing your milk supply. Babies also tend to sleep less than parents expect and will not necessarily just eat and sleep, but begin to have wakeful periods where they will like to interact with mom and dad. Nighttime needs. Young babies grow at a phenomenal rate and have a physiological need to be fed at night. Also, your breasts can become engorged and uncomfortable if too long a time elapses between feeds. Prolactin levels are naturally higher during the night than in the day, so breastfeeding at night especially helps to maintain a good supply of milk. Nipple care. Apply Bepantin to the nipple area after a feed. Bepantin is used for the prevention and treatment of cracked and fissured nipples. An important factor is that Bepantin does not need to be wiped off the nipple area before baby latches at the next feed. Your diet has no real impact on the amount and quality of your breast milk. The amount of milk your breasts make depends on how often and how effectively your baby is breastfeeding. Ideally, a healthy diet should have begun even before you fell pregnant. During the time that your baby was growing inside your uterus while he was developing, his health depended on a good source of nutrition from your diet. Also, while you were pregnant, your body lay down fat stores and it is from these together with your diet that help you as a new mom to cope with the extra energy that you need for breastfeeding. Even if your diet was poor, your breast milk would still be enough and of a good quality, although you might be feeling more tired and be less resistant to infection. The flavor of the variety of foods you are eating is constantly changing the flavor of your breast milk. It is preparing your baby for the time when you are going to add the same variety of solid foods to his diet, which is recommended to be only after six months. If you are a vegetarian and your diet does not contain any animal proteins, such as eggs, fish and chicken, then you may need to add supplements of vitamin B12. In the early days, your baby may have difficulty coping with eliminating caffeine. Intake of coffee and other caffeine-rich drinks, such as tea, cola or other soft drinks, should be limited to 5 cups or less a day. As he grows older, this will become less of an issue to your baby. You do not need to drink large amounts of fluid or milk in order to produce more breast milk. It is better to have something to drink when you are thirsty or whenever you sit down to breastfeed. In other words, drink to cope with your thirst. There are no foods that you need to eat or to avoid while you are breastfeeding as it is rare for a particular food or food group to be responsible for causing an upset behavior in your baby. If you begin to suspect that one of the foods you are eating seems to upset him, then you would simply leave that food off your menu for a while. This is a better idea than not eating many of the foods such as curries, tomato, cabbage or garlic that may form a staple part of your diet. Even chocolate eaten in moderation should not cause a problem. Eating a moderate amount of a variety of foods in as close as their natural state as possible and in sufficient quantities is a good way to ensure that your diet is as highly nutritious as it could be. Concerns about being separated from baby. It is normal to feel very anxious about being away from your baby, even if you've made up your mind that you want to breastfeed whilst you're still working. There are many other decisions that can cause anxiety about being away from your baby. To find a caregiver that you can trust and that will support your decision to continue breastfeeding. To decide on and learn an effective method of milk expression. To know more about breastfeeding, for example the factors that affect milk supply. To make a time and place for feeding your baby or expressing milk at work. 
to help your baby become comfortable taking feedings from the caregiver whilst you are away. Find someone that you can trust and who will listen to your concerns and acknowledge your feelings, thereby helping you to make this transition with your baby a gentle and confident one. The need to express does not go on forever. As the baby begins taking other foods, you will slowly be able to increase the time between expressions. As your baby gets older, the caregiver can feed the baby solids, whilst you and your baby can enjoy the breastfeeding relationship whenever you are together. Find support from friends or others who have experienced breastfeeding a baby and continue to work. They will help you withstand the outside pressures. How to breastfeed before going back to work. Two weeks before returning to work, concentrate on increasing your milk supply by exclusively breastfeeding your baby. For example, short and frequent feeds 10 to 12 times in 24 hours. To introduce a bottle to your baby in order to receive the expressed milk, start one to two weeks before work by asking someone else to give the bottle in a different place to where you normally breastfeed. This could be given once a day during the usual times that you would be at work. How often to express or when pump replaces breastfeeding. This depends on how much milk is needed for the baby and how many hours you are separated from your baby. If mom is working a full day away from her baby, she would express three times. She would breastfeed her baby when she wakes, before she leaves the baby, express during the morning at work, a short for comfort pumping, a full pumping at lunchtime, and another short pumping in the afternoon. If you are working less than four hours, then you can breastfeed before work and then again when you are at home with baby. If you are working four to six hours, express once, two to three hours after each feed, therefore decreasing the feeling of fullness and making it easier for the baby to latch on later. Delaying expressing more than four hours can lead to engorgement, a block duct or mastitis. As long as you are expressing milk, there will be a supply. Expressing in the morning is easier because of the breasts being fuller and you are feeling more rested than in the evening when your supply may be lower. Basics of expressing breast milk. Expressing and pumping are learned skills and the effectiveness of these skills improve with practice. Factors that influence pumping. Whether you are able to stimulate your letdown or milk ejection reflex, how long it has been since you last breastfed or expressed, how practiced you are at expressing, how comfortable you are in the setting where you are expressing, the time of the day, your milk supply, stress and its effects on you, choice of nipple fittings and the ease of use of the breast pump. Understanding the letdown reflex and expressing. The letdown can be psychologically conditioned as well as physically stimulated. For example, some mothers let down their milk when they hear a crying baby or even at the thought of their baby. Because the sensations of pumping and hand expressing are not the same as the sensations of feeding a baby, especially at first, you may need to encourage your letdown using some of the following methods of physical and psychological stimulation. Express milk in a familiar and comfortable environment. Minimize distractions, so take your phone off the hook, turn on some relaxing music and have everything ready that you may need, such as a glass of water or juice, a nutritious snack or something to read. Follow a pre-expression ritual. Use a rhythmic motion while expressing to mimic a baby's suck. Focus all your senses on your baby 